Welcome to Weld.com. <clears throat> I need to go through a, a couple of things here. I'm going to do one later on on some thicker material, some three quarter inch and even thicker than that. Uh, but I want to go through some torch operations. We've had numerous people ask about torch operations. So I, I really want to simply just go through just the torch itself. I had this dream about doing like a silent video where I put, got one out of the box and put it all together on the cylinders and got everything going. Probably one of those high speed films or whatever, but um, anyway, just some basics. Here in the shop, I always run quick disconnects on our torch bodies for the simple fact that I like to keep the weekend warriors out of my, uh, out of my shop. Sorry about that, Matt Arnold, but uh, I always just like, if I take the torch off the cylinders, bleed everything, I go put this away, then I, it keeps people from coming in the shop here and hacking up material that doesn't even belong to them, but it happens. In any event, when we go to put together a torch, um, never, ever, ever put a wrench on this, this nut right here. There are machine seats and O-rings in here, and you can destroy them by putting crescent wrench on them. If your torch is popping either in the with the tip on there or back in through here somewhere, over tightening is not the, that's not gonna solve anything. It's worse. You need to take it apart, send it in, get it serviced. If you have dropped this and dinged this on the end and it doesn't seat, you need to get it reseated. Again, if you're not qualified to work on them, don't. <clears throat> I hand tighten all these. I also, you know, and you'll see people operate these all different ways as a personal preference, but I, I guess I grew up and I learned how to do this with the valves facing away from me. It seems like when I'm operating the torch and these valves are up here on top, I ended up bumping one and I readjust my flame and I, I'm tired of it. So I always just turn mine to the bottom side. I take less of a chance of, of getting into it. So this is a combination torch we could put a welding nozzle or a heating nozzle on this. Right now we have the cutting torch at attachment to it, which means the oxygen valve down here opens all the way, all the way. The acetylene valve and this valve adjust your flame, and this is your cutting oxygen, okay? I have an OT tip I'm sorry, I have a double aught tip of this series. This is like the, the super range size of Victor Torch. I like these small detail torches for cutting thin material. When I get into some thicker stuff, well, I use the journeyman size. So <clears throat> a double aught tip, and I have the pressure set at 5 and 20. And the reason I set them a little low is, I want, I want to demonstrate this. I wish I had a brand new or a nice triple lot tip. I think all my tips are at home. And here at the college, when we're detailing material, time is of the essence. So we tend to use a little bit bigger of a torch. Tip, we'll oversize the tip a little bit so that we can get some speed. Like on three eighths plate, we'll go ahead and cut with number one. We get a good preheat, we can get a good bevel. I see a lot of people run extreme pressures uh, and I want to experiment with that because I, recently I've been seeing some, there's some good torch hands out there, real good torch hands, and they do some amazing work by hand. And <clears throat> they run their pressures up real high and I really have never done that because I've, I've personally just not gotten that good of quality cuts out of it. I want to show you something here when I light up this torch. I always light a torch where you're not getting a lot of soot bombs and everything. You turn this way down and you get this black soot. You can also turn it way up where the flame is separated from the torch tip. As you add oxygen, you're probably going to snuff your flame out. So I always reconnect my flame and ease the oxygen on. There's three flames associated with oxyfuel cutting and welding. There is a carburizing flame, which is indicated, come on, 
which is indicated by the turquoise feather in here. There is a neutral flame of which we do 99% of our cutting with, or should, and there is also an oxidizing flame where the inner cones become extremely sharp and you can hear that, that hissing sound. That is actually a very useful flame. All three of them are very useful. But for cutting just plain carbon steel, it is the neutral flame. I have cut on certain alloys, like a little bit of hardened steel, like knife blades in a plywood mill. This carburizing flame does the trick. It looks weird, it looks a little black, but it gives you a really, really nice cut. Uh, cutting on some rusting material sometimes, this is a better flame because it doesn't react with the rust. It kind of looks like that. It's strange because it's not, you're not used to looking at it. I want you to listen to this sound here and if the camera guy can zoom in here. I want, I want him to see if he can catch this dark blue line coming through here. Actually, I'm going to make it better yet. That ripping, raspy sound. And <clears throat> another view of it. This tip is not completely good. I'm getting the good ripping, raspy sound, which means I can make some quality cuts and not have a lot of cleanup, and slag and stuff. But when this oxygen jet is concentrated right down through the center of that flame, and you can hear that good rip, it doesn't get any better than that. I worked with a buddy of mine that could take a number, actually the triple lot tips are a lot easier to do this with. And I used to do a demonstration where when I pulled the trigger on this oxygen and it was ripping out here and come out here about three feet, it was real long. I could take my hand and close my fingers around it and not get burned on either side, gloved hand. I think I tried it barehanded one time. I'm joking. That's pretty good condition right there. So five and 20 on the, uh, five on the acetylene, 20 on the, uh, on the oxygen. So <clears throat> to cut with this, I've got I've prepared some, some quarter inch material and one of the viewer comments was, how do you cut circles? What do you do with circles? Well, I'm lazy, so I use a circle burner and it's homemade. And there's a lot of cool tools on the market. The best ones are the ones that, that this operates independently. Man, you can move super smooth. This one I made up just so I could have something quick. Uh, I put a small nut down here. I clamp, I just slide that on there and that's for the super range torch. I turn it around to the other end and it goes right onto the journeyman size. It's just something I've always carried in my tool, tool bag. So, you know, I try to make stuff that works for me and it's quick and simple and accurate so I can get repeatable results. I've laid this out so that we can radius the corners of these like we were making the lifting lug and you know that's a little too much to grind so why not just go ahead and cut it i also tend to take mill scale off both sides of my cut because it cuts a lot smoother and faster and it doesn't take very long to clean up i've also laid out a hole and uh, when we get ready to cut the hole i will probably come on the inside of this quite a ways and pierce and move over to the edge and then we're going to start our hole so let me set up over here on a piece of pipe over the floor so I can get off of this table here and we'll be right back. Welcome back. <clears throat> I've moved over here so I, can, so I can dump this on the floor. It's high enough up off the floor that I'm not gonna damage the floor or make it explode or anything, so.
goes pretty quick. I'm telling you, cleaning your steel, make good quality cuts, and you won't be doing a lot of cleanup. Slag stuck on there to come right off. Okay, here's where it gets fun. This is this is where it's real cool to have this deal that goes around. Okay, I don't have one yet, so here's what I have to do. I come over here, get rid of my striker. Come over here and get a good preheat going. Here's about the time that I tell you, I have a real good torch condition right now. And if I was on mill scale, I've been doing preheating. And then I'll check this right before I get ready to cut and it's ruined. The piece of mill scale flipped off and went right up into my, right up into my flame. Got to stop, run a wire through there. and go right back to cutting. Okay, so for me, to operate this rascal, I gotta get completely upside down. And what I do is when I pierce this, I go away from me. This part's easy. This little dance move pirouette thing I'm doing is a little hard. And then so that I don't jam the torch down in there, I always operate it two hands at the very end. So <clears throat> let me bring this up off the table and we'll take a look at it. I won't knock any slag off. I'll be right back. So here's a finished part, two radiuses out on the corner that were too big to grind and then a hole cut in the middle of it. I said I wasn't going to touch anything, so... I mean, that comes off pretty easy and you're going to touch them with a grinder or a sander anyway. Those are uh, hot. Those are also pretty smooth. I just found that to be really easy, useful, accurate. Uh, I want to do some other torch demonstrations with using a a straight edge, maybe challenge the, the line burner over here. Uh, this thing here I brought out because this was hand cut. Uh, I've always kept this around over on the burn table kind of as a counterweight, but we actually hand cut that with the burn bar. So um, we, I think we challenged the line burner on to see who could make the biggest cut on, best cut on inch thick plate. And believe me, there's guys that can cut some incredibly heavy metal with really good accuracy. Uh, some of the stuff I've seen on Instagram. Good learning community, good folks out there. This is um, it's a pretty good hole. Again, by cleaning, by cleaning mill scale, uh, things cut pretty, pretty quick and pretty smooth. Gonna touch it with the grinder, but at least it's not heavy, heavy grinding. I've seen people who operate a torch and uh, their pressures are all off and their part doesn't fall off and they'll turn this over and beat the daylights out of it. This has my name on it. No, this one is, belongs to the college. My name is engraved in my torch and it's only been to the repair shop once in 30 years. A um, long time ago when I was contracting, I bought two sets of tips, triple lot through number three thinking that I would go through them. I was still on set number one about 15, 18 years later. The only reason I'll ding a tip up is if I take it out of the torch and I set it down because it's too hot, I put one in my pocket one day. That was fun to watch. Uh, it was a little hot, but if I set them down, they roll off the table and they ding. This is uh, soft copper alloys. So you ding this face right here and you put it in your torch and you'll be cutting along and all of a sudden you, 
you got a little blowout, little farty thing going around these threads here. Well, that's because your tip isn't seated. So naturally, everybody goes over and starts wrenching it down, and that's not the right thing to do. Take this tip out and inspect it, and if it's got a ding in the seat, you may be able to flat file it with a mill file and get it back to shape. If not, um, get a seating tool, or if not, you're, you're done, and that's the sad part about it. But I've made these last a really, really long time. Just running a wire through them, uh, set correct pressures, make quality cuts. It saves me a lot of time. I've also worked in a lot of people's shops where I take my personal tools in. I'll do all my layout, take their tip out of their torch, put mine in, make my cuts, take my tip out, put theirs back in. And I, I just save so much time. It, I know it kind of sounds like real meticulous and real anal about things, but I'm telling you, it, it is so much faster. I hate to grind. And I, I've seen people cut and then they spend the next 20 minutes cleaning up their cuts with a grinder. Man, I'm not into that. I, I just seem to make the cut and, you know, quality layout, quality cuts, quality fit. Your welds look a lot better. Hey, I hope this helps. And uh, if you've got some comments, which I'm sure you will, <clears throat> make, them, make them good ones, please. <laughs> but I hope this helps. And if you have questions or anything we can help you with, let us know. Thanks for watching Weld.com.